Praise God. We thank God this morning as we uh, are opening up our Facebook Live um, session here for Rock Faith Ministries. Welcome to all of you who have joined us today. We are so thankful that to have you uh, with us here at Rock Faith International Ministries, where we are removing walls of separation in order to serve. We are removing the walls of separation. Praise God. The power of God is the one that's removing the walls of separation so that we, the people of God, will be able to serve in the capacity that God wants us to serve in. If you will join me this morning in a word of prayer, we want to thank God too for our pastor, our senior pastor here at Rock Faith Ministries, who is none other than Gooley Hoggart. We thank God for him, for his dedication or his commitment of stepping out into the call that God has called on him. And I thank God as I serve with him here in ministry, we are a team, we are joined together in the ministry, in the cause of God, of the gospel. And so we thank God for uh, that this morning. If you will join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this word time today that you are giving us. We thank you, O oh Lord, as we come before your presence. O oh, Heavenly Father, I pray today that you will word my mouth, that the people of God will be blessed. Heavenly Father, have your way today in this service. Those on the phone, conference line, and those in this Facebook live session, I pray today, God, that your word will go forth and that it goes forth, God, that it will touch the hearts of each person that we will receive just what you want each of us to receive. And we thank you for it. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We thank God right now for our Bible decree. Uh, we here at Rock Faith, we do have a decree uh, according, based on the word of God. And our Bible decree, decree is, this is my Bible, God's word. In it is eternal life. And because God's word is my guide, I will not take anything from it nor add anything to it. This is the word of God, and we thank God for it on today. So if you will come along with us today as we get ready to go into this time, I will try not to be before you long. But, you know, in today's world, we, we've been re really time conscious. We get real time conscious when it comes to the things of God. But, but we don't get too time conscious when we are about and we are you know, out in the mall shopping or we're at a movie or we're socializing with our friends. But when it comes to God, we get very time conscious and we don't want to give God but that little nth amount of, of time. 30 minutes, God, that's too long. An hour, God, that's too long. And so I, I encourage us today, whatever the things of, of, of God, make sure that we take the time to give to God, give back to him. You know, this time doesn't belong to us anyway. It's all God's time. And so today I encourage you to, to give God some of you, some of your time, some of everything that's about who you are. Give it back to him and let him be glorified. So today, that wasn't even a part of my subject today, but I just wanted to put that in there because, you know, as I, I often say, you know, we're not going to be before you long because I know the attention span of people, it can become very short. So in today's society, okay, we live around people all the time, right? We live with people, we are around people, and, and in our uh, dealings with people in the workplace, in our homes, or wherever we are, you know, we feel like we really know people, but we can be around people for years and really never get to know people. And most people will say, well, I know people, I, I, you know, they can't fool me. But, you know, you got parents who will say, you know, I know my child, and you know, I, I know my child wouldn't do that because I know my child. And, and then you've got parents who, you know, their children, people that turn serial killers, killers, people never expected that this person is a serial killer. This person is a child molester. This person is a rapist. That's because we really don't know people like we think we know people, you know, but the truth be told, you know, we don't even know ourselves like we think we know ourselves. There are some things that we have done in life and we look back over them if we be honest with ourselves. There are some things that we've done and we say, I can't imagine that I even thought about doing that. You know why? Because you don't know yourself like you think you know yourself. Many times, you know, we will be surprised at after the fact the things that some of the things that we have done in life and we, we come back and we look back at it I can't believe I did that. 
It just wasn't in my mind or my heart that I thought to do that. But that goes to show us that we don't know people like we think we know them. And people don't know us like they think they know us. And we don't even know ourselves like we think we know ourselves. And, and even though we may, may not know ourselves in the capacity that we think we do, I tell you today, there is one that does know us. He knows our thoughts. He knows the intents of our hearts. He knows when we're planning to do something that we didn't even think about we were planning to do. And this person is the, the first person of the Trinity, God, Jehovah God, Jehovah God. So my subject today is God knows you. God knows you. If we don't think God knows us, but God knows us. And even we don't know ourselves like we think we know ourselves, but God knows us. There's a saying that says, that says you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And you can't fool God none of the time. So the subject today again is God knows you. So don't be deceived today because God knows you. My scripture base is coming today out of Jeremiah, the first chapter, four and five. And, and uh, the definition of the word know, it is to be aware of through observation, inquiry, or information. And the second description uh, is, definition is, have developed a relationship with someone through meeting or spending time with them to be familiar with, right? To know. That, so we break this down to know somebody. It, the, the, the definition said to know somebody, you need to be familiar with them. You need to spend time with them. And you need to really uh, be familiar with who they are, the caliber of person they are, their character. But even then, you don't know them like you think you know. But who does? God. God knows us. So Jeremiah 1 the fourth and fifth verses, it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Hallelujah. And before thy camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Hallelujah. I love that scripture because it talks about here where Jeremiah is one of the major prophets in the Bible. He was the one that God called to give the people, people of Israel a message for the time, a prophetic word for the time that they were in. See, Israel had been taken away captive, praise God. And they've been taken away captive. Why? Because of their disobedience. Many times we are taken captive because of our disobedience. So Israel had been taken captive, but God had put a prophet in place. Even before he was conceived in his mother's womb, God knew that he was going to call Jeremiah for such a time as this. So he called him for this specific reason, for this specific time, this specific dispensation to be a prophet to the people of Israel. State. He was letting them know that he had not forgotten his people. So he put in place a prophet, just like he did Moses to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. He put Jeremiah in place. And Jeremiah's his, his thing was to bring a prophetic word to the, to the people of God at that time. And so in order for God to uh, perform, get Jeremiah to perform the task that he had called him to, he first wanted him to know that I know you, Jeremiah. See, many times we don't think that God knows us. But God said to Jeremiah, before you were conceived in the womb, Jeremiah, I knew you. I knew the type of person I was calling you to be. I knew that I was calling you to give a word to my chosen people, Israel. I knew what I was planning for your life. I knew the caliber of man I wanted you to be. I knew I needed somebody who would walk in boldness. I knew you, Jeremiah, and I needed you to be the one to bring this prophetic word to my chosen people. God also wants us to know today that he 
knows us. He wants us to know that we have a, a purpose and an assignment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is saying to us today, you have a purpose and an assignment. And I put that on you even before you were created, before your mama and daddy came together and conceived you. I have a purpose and a plan for your life. See, you thought that you were here to enjoy the niceties of this life. And some of it is yes for that. But intently purposed by God, you are here on assignment for God, by God to do a work for such a time as this. We have got to be kingdom minded folk in order to bring forth the work that God has called us to do. It's not about our personal agendas, but it's about kingdom work. It's not about, you know, dressing up and looking good and looking pretty. Praise God. You know, even this morning before I was coming on Facebook Live, I said, Lord, I want to look a little decent for the people today. But right then when I was looking in the mirror, the Lord spoke to me and said, it ain't about you, Janice. It ain't about how you looking. I need you to be in place to get this word out for the people of God. Hallelujah. Because I need my people to know that I've got them on assignment. Why? Because I know them. I know who I've called. I know what I want them to do. And I need them to know that. So God wanted Jeremiah to know Jeremiah, I knew you. So don't come to me, you know, talking about what you can't do and what you don't think, because I already have orchestrated this thing. Because, you know, many times we think that because we can't see God, that he can't see us. But to the contrary, God knows us and he sees us. The Bible teaches us to remember, uh, the creator, right? Because he is the one that created us. God is our creator. Now, Genesis 1 and 27, it says to us, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female. So since God created us, wouldn't you think that he, would, that he knows us? Think about it. If you put something on a potter's wheel, and you make it and you mold it and you shape it. Don't you think you know all the crooks and innies and ins and outs about that thing that you created? Wouldn't you think that you know what it can do and what it cannot do? Wouldn't you think that you would know that piece of creation that you did with your own hands? That you know its capabilities? Don't you think that when God created us, he knew all about us. He knew, he said, Janice, you know, I'm creating this one here. She going to be six foot three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, she going to think that it ain't nothing about her that can be used, but I'm going to show her. Mm. I'm going to show her in life what I've created her to be and who I've, what I've put inside of her. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Many of us don't know what God has put inside of us because as we were talking yesterday, you have not tapped into going to that next level. But I encourage you today to go to that level that God wants you to go to. God created you. And he knows all about you. So today, I want us to get deeper into this message today as we go and learn about what it is that God knows us about. How does he know us? My first point is that God knows you better than you know yourself. God knows you better than you know yourself. Psalms 22 and 9, it says, But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me to hope when I was upon my mother's breast. And I'm sorry right here, y'all, because every time I read this scripture, it touches my heart because it gives me insight on knowing that when God knew me, see, there are some people who they didn't get that opportunity to come forth out of the womb because the mother aborted them. The mother 
didn't want him. But God said, I knew you and I created you for such a time as this. And I've got purpose and plan for your life. God knows us better than we know us. And I thank God for it. So God told Jeremiah, he said he knew him before he was even conceived in the womb. Isaiah 49 and 1, it says, Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye, people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all bear with me for a second. Bear, just bear with me for a second. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord called him from the womb to do what he called, wanted him to do. The Lord called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, hath he made mention of my name. And that was Isaiah 49 and 1, where God was saying to Isaiah that I called you too, even before you came forth out of your out of the bowels of your mother, that God had a plan for your life. Isaiah, he too was a prophet who was to give a word to the God, to the people of God. So we should never think that uh, we are here by happenstance because God knows us and he knows us better than we know ourselves. God has a purpose for your life. I remember the Purpose Driven book where it says you are not here by chance. You are not an accident, but God has a plan for your life and he wants to use you. Why? Because he knows you. He knows you. He knows you better than you know yourself. Praise the name of God. God knows you and he has amazing plans for your life. He has some things that you haven't even begun to tap into because he knows what he put you here for. First Samuel 16 and 7. If you have your Bibles, read with me. It says, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. I want to say to us today that God is looking at our heart. He knows where we are. And there are things, oh God, that we, that people that we think should be in places. But God said, like he told Samuel, he said, I have refused them, but I've got one that's coming that I've chosen that is after my own heart, praise God. And that was none other than David. See, people look at us on the outside. People look at us and they size us up. They say what we can and can't do. That's because they don't know what's inside of us. They don't know what the caliber of person and the spirit that God has instilled in us. So therefore, when they look at us, they judge us by what they see. They judge us by how we act. They judge us by how we smell. They judge us by how we dress. That's what people do when they look on the outward appearance. You know, but when God sees us, he knows us better than we know ourselves. He already knows that we needed God as a savior and he's been right there all the time. Many times we can, we can act like we're saved, but God says, you're faking the funk right now. You're not really, you're not really into me like you're trying to act like you are. You try to act like you're saved, but at the, at the, when, the, when the rubber meets the road and, and when the test of, tr of time come, you're not going to be able to stand up because you're not really there with me like that. See, God knows you. God sees you. And he knows better than we know. You can go behind the closed doors of your home and you can, you can talk different things. And when you come out, you come out looking all smelling like a rose and you're dressed real nice. But God says, I know you. I knew that when you were behind those closed doors, you were cussing. You were talking all kinds of profanity. You were doing all kinds of sexual perversions. You were looking at pornography. You were doing all this stuff. But I know you. 
So don't be trying to act like I didn't see you because I know you. Why? Because I am God. You see, I'm the one God that made it, that made you. And I knew, I knew what you were capable of doing. You didn't know what you were capable of doing, but God knew what you were capable of doing. Praise God. And more importantly, see, God knows what he has called us to do for a time and a season in our life. David says uh, in Psalms 139, 1 through 4, he says, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me, thou hast known me. Thou knowest my down sittings and my uprisings. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down. And are acquainted, Halaboshanda. You are acquainted with all my ways, God. Because you know me, because you know me. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O oh God, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. See, we can try to act like we're getting ready to say one thing. But see, that word that was getting ready to flip off of our tongue, God already knew it was in our heart to come out. But we slurred it a little bit and said it another way. But God said, I knew, I knew you. I know what you were getting ready to say. So today, don't think that we are fooling God because we're not. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And the other thing is, God knows you better than others know you. Proverbs 23, 6 and 7. He says, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou any dainty meats. Don't sit down with people who got an evil eye. The, se the seventh verse, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he, with, as, with, saith he with thee, but in his heart, it's not with thee. God knows you better than others know you. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You know, that first verse when it says somebody comes to you and they say, sit down and let's eat and, and, and enjoy the dainties uh, set before you. He says, but in his heart, his heart is really not to do that thing. You know, years ago, I used to tell my children, I said, don't, don't be uh, naive. When everybody asks you to come to their house, they're not really meaning come to my house. They're not really saying you are welcome to come to my house. They're saying it out of a casual conversation. They're saying it out of a cat just to make conversation in most times. And, and you say, well, well, Ma, they would say, well, Ma, why you think that? I said, you go over there and you, sh you show up and, and that you'll find out. They don't really mean for you to come to their house. See, people say many things, but in their heart, their heart is not with you. That's why it's important for us as a people of God to have a spirit of discernment. It's important for us to be able to discern good from evil, to be able to discern when people just saying fluff and stuff off the top of their head and, and they don't really mean it. See, God gives us as the people of God. You, you ever wonder sometimes when people come to you with some things when you got a spirit of discernment and they say such and such and you might say, well, I already knew that because God has given you some discernment. God has given you some insight, some intuitiveness in the spirit. He's let you know that these people are saying a whole lot of things, but they're not meaning what they're saying. So today, God has given us, in it, given us much insight. We should never entrust ourselves, our heart, based on what a person tells us. Because the word of God tells us, put not your confidence in man, but put your confidence in God. We should never entrust ourselves. That means get relaxed, get free. Just, just say, just go with it. No, don't ever do that based on what people tell you. But you better go to God and seek his face about it. Because God knows us better than people know us. People may say things, many things casually to us. But they don't mean it many times. They don't mean it out of their heart. 
but their mouths are saying many things. It's not a real invite to us. It's not real with what they're saying because they don't understand that they don't even know that they don't know themselves like God knows them. Hallelujah. So today, I want us to be encouraged today uh, to, to be able to count on what God knows. Go to God about who we are. The other thing is, the point I want to bring to us is, since you know that God knows you, since we know that God knows us, stop acting like he doesn't. Stop acting like he don't know us. I'm just going to break it down like that. I know that might not have been right to say it like that. But since you know that God knows you, stop acting like he don't know you. Meaning, in Galatians 6 and 7, it says, be not deceived. God is not marked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And then in 1 Corinthians 8 and 3, it says, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. God knows us. You see, many times uh, we think that God don't pay any attention or, or we can do the little white lie and, and God didn't, you know, that didn't really matter to God. But see, God, he says he knows the intent of our heart. He knows what we're thinking before we think. He knows where we're headed, hallelujah, before we even get there. He knew that when we started on the road to go to grandma's house, see, got turned around. And, and it won't that you were Little Red Riding Hood either. You didn't get turned around because of that. But you got turned around because your intent really was to go over to the other place. Praise God. See, God knows where we are, our t intents are. He knows where our heart's desire is. He knows today whether our heart is to him or not. And he knows that. See, the tree is known by the fruit it bears. So if your heart is to God, you're going to be bearing some good fruit. So stop acting like God don't know you. Stop acting like God doesn't see you because he sees you. Stop acting like it because you know he knows you. When we need to stop, uh, when we need to stop acting like uh, we are not known by God, he knows his children. Okay, so as a parent, let me ask you this. As a parent, don't you relatively know your children? I mean, you might not know them, know them, but as a relative, you know them. Well, let me ask you this question then. Don't you think that spiritually God knows his children? It says when he created us, he created us in his image. We got that spirit, that spirit side about us. So spiritually, if God created us, don't you think spiritually he knows us? See, we look at that flesh part of us. Now that flesh part of us can flip at a, at a, at a dime. It can flip on a dime. But that spirit part of us, God sees that and he knows that. So stop acting like God's not looking at us. See, many times we think because God can't see, because we can't see God, that he can't see us. But God sees us and he knows us. He knows us. He put his word inside of us. And because he put his word inside of us, he said, he tells us that he watches over his word to perform it. Just like he put his word in my heart today to be able to minister this word today to the people of God. He says, Janice, I'm watching over you. I see you. Why? Because I put my word in you. I put my word in you. So I'm watching over my word to perform it. That whatever you are speaking, I got to make sure that you are speaking what I'm giving you to speak. Not what you come off with a whim out of your own mind. And I ain't even going to say my intellect because any intellect that I have, it came from God too. So whatever God gives us, it comes from him and he's watching over that. He wants to, he tells us in Matthew 10 and 30, he says that even the, uh, mm, 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 y'all better know it today. He said, even the hairs on your head are numbered. He got you. He knows you. He sees you. And for y'all that are bald headed, don't think that just because you ain't got no hair that he ain't watching over that too. He knows that there are some sprouts and some, there's some nubs up under there. He knows every one of those hairs that's on your head. 
So he sees you. So don't think you got away just because you're bald headed. Because God says, I see you. I know you. In Psalms 139 and 7, he says, whether shall I go? This is David talking here. Whether shall I go from thy spirit? Or whether shall I flee from thy presence? We are never out of God's sight. He's, he knows us and he sees us. This should behoove us to do that thing which is right. This should behoove us that since God knows us, one, God knows us better than we know ourselves. God knows us better than others know us. And God, since he knows us, praise God, since he knows us, don't act like he don't know us. And he doesn't see us because he does. So today, uh, in my closing, I, I, I want this word of God to behoove us today to do that thing which is right. If you've been shucking and jiving, ducking and hiding, as the old folk used to say in the song, slipping and sliding, huh, let's stop that. And let's be, don't you feel better when, you know, I, I remember years ago, y'all, I'm just going to be transparent. Years ago, and y'all see me, y'all see a person who has been made up for God, right? Been made over. I'm going to tell you. Because years ago, um, when I used to be driving, didn't have no car, no insurance. Praise God. Hallelujah. Didn't have no decals on the car. And when every time I saw the police, I'd be, oh, Lord. My, my, I'd get to sweating. And I'd be like, Lord, please don't let them stop me. Please don't let them stop me. That's because I, 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 I knew what was going on. But the, I didn't know if, if the police was going to stop me. And all my stuff was jacked up. It was illegal. Or oh, I might have had a sticker that I got from some friend or somebody and put on the windshield of the car for inspection. But I knew if the police stopped me that they could they could find that where that ticket came from, that, that sticker. But that's how it is, y'all. When we live a life, when we think people don't know us and see us, but God sees us. But today, I'm glad. I feel so much better. I'm legal. I got insurance. I got my inspection stickers. I got my personal property paid up. Thank you, Lord. Only by the grace of God. And I'm glad that when I pass the police, sometimes I get a little nervous because of my, my, my what it used to be. But I have to remind myself. I have to remind myself, Janice, you legal. You okay. Just going to drive like normal. Just going to drive like you're supposed to drive because you're legal. And so I'm saying that to say to us, it's, you feel so much better when you're doing things the right way instead of slipping and sliding, ducking and hiding. It's good when you can step out and what you see is what you get. Wherever I go, this is what you get. You still get Janice. Behind this camera, you get Janice when I step out into the social events or social affairs. You get Janice when I step out in the church arena. You get Janice when I step out on my job. I'm who I am because God knows me. And so that's why we ought to live our lives in a way that says, God, you know me better than I know me. So you take the reins of my heart. Today, you might be a person who wants to uh, step into the arena that says, I want to live my life because I know that God, as God knows me. You want to live your life as one who is saved and devoted and committed to God. Today, I encourage you to come along with us. Come along with me on this journey. And I tell you, it's an awesome journey. I wouldn't trade nothing for my journey now. That's what the old folk used to say. And you know, every day, I'm becoming one of those people, the old folk. And I thank God for it. Today, come along with me in this journey. Pray along with me if you want salvation, if you want re re being reclaimed, and if you want an anointing, a refreshing in the Holy Spirit. Most gracious Father, we thank you on today. We thank you, God, for your word that has gone forth. And God, I pray today that you will touch the hearts of this, your people. Oh, Heavenly Father, somebody doesn't know you today as Lord and Savior. And I pray today, oh God, that they will get to know you. Even now, God, help them to yield their vessel. Let them know that it's a simple process. That if they believe in their hearts, oh God, and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord, oh God. That he is your son that died, oh God, was born and died and rose again for us. 
that they too can be saved. Today, oh God, help them to accept you into their heart, that they may live a life, oh God, pleasing in your sight, a life, oh God, that you, oh Heavenly Father, will be pleased to call them your sons and daughters. Lord, we thank you for it today. Reclaim the backslider today, oh God, that one who's been wayward, who said, I don't know if I should come home or not, but God, I pray today that you will touch their heart and help them to yield their vessel to you, oh God, and come back to the place, oh God, where they once knew you, oh Lord. Today, oh God, an outpouring of your spirit, oh God, on these phone lines, God, on this conference call, oh God, and in this Facebook live, an outpouring of your spirit, oh God, in to the hearts of your people. And Lord, we thank you for it right now. Have your way, O oh Lord, and we will continue to give you praise, honor, and glory because it belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. We thank God for those of you who have joined us today. We would love to hear from you. We would love to hear from you. You can reach out to Pastor Gooley Hargard or myself. You can visit us on our website at www dot rock faith international ministries rock faith imi i'm sorry um dot org and all of our contact information is there feel free our phone numbers are there feel free to call us feel free to text us feel free to just put a prayer request out there and let us know how you're doing and if there's something special that we can pray with you about today i pray that you will be blessed and most of all please know that as you go know that god knows you he knows you better than you know yourself. Praise God and amen. Have a blessed day. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Yes,